Hey everyone, back in September of 2018, I did a video here on this channel where I showed off some code that I had written to control the super source feature of some of the Blackmagic switchers. And I made that, that code available to anybody who wanted to download it. And since that video has been released, that code's been downloaded nearly 2,500 times. So it's been reasonably popular. Uh, as with all my software projects that I do though, it's never done, right? So it's always under constant improvement, uh, constant, uh, constantly having new features added to it and so forth. And this one is, a, is not an exception. A few of those updates I've actually released silently. Uh, so if you downloaded that software early on, it's actually been updated a few times since that original version. But more recently, I've basically done a complete rewrite of it from the ground up. So basically none of the original code is still there. And I've added a whole bunch of new cool stuff to it, especially after using it in real-world situations. I, I thought of new ideas on how to make it a little easier, how to make it do more, uh, those kinds of things. So with this video today, I'm actually releasing version 2.0, again, as a complete rewrite. And that is going to be available from djp.li slash supersource2, no spaces, and that's the number two. And... Again, as before, totally free. Anybody can download it and use it. Right off the, right out of the gate here, I wanted to make one thing uh, clear because I got a lot of questions about it before. This code only works on the Blackmagic switchers that have the Super Source feature. As of the time of recording, that includes the 2ME Production Studio, both original and 4K versions, the 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K, and the Constellation. So if you have another Blackmagic switcher, this code, unfortunately, is not going to work with that because you don't have the hardware that's required in order to make this actually work. That said, if somebody's feeling ambitious, they could take this code, make some tweaks in it, and make it work with an upstream key to move one picture-in-picture -picture source around the screen with animation. Certainly not as cool, not as uh, fancy as this, which allows you to do four different windows at once. But again, that's because the switcher has to have that super source feature in order for these to work. So with that said, let me just get in and show you a little bit of a demo. So here I'm looking at uh, a two camera view, obviously. So I've, I've got my X keys panel. This is a 24 key. I just barely picked up uh, explicitly for the purpose of controlling this feature within the software. So I've got my button, as I demonstrated before, where you cycle through the different super source layouts. And uh, because the super, super source is currently being used, you're watching the super source here. As I press the button, you're not going to see any change. But if I press the apply layout button next to it, you'll see the transition from one super source layout to the next. So I'll go to the next layout, hit apply layout, source layout again, apply layout. And you can see as I'm pressing those buttons that it's cycling between different layouts and doing a smooth animation between those. Okay, so everything I've shown you so far was basically part of what was there before. The big big difference with these two buttons is now there are a lot more presets included and I'll just keep cycling through so you can see some of the other ones. So yeah, again there's a lot more. These are most of these are ones that I've used in actual productions. So I'll, as I'm prepping for a production try and figure out what the needs for that production are going to be and then create new layouts for those so here you're seeing all some of the ones that I've used for some of the productions I've done in the past and uh, these full screen ones are actually new so that's uh, that previous one was box one this is box two box three and box four and those are actually used by the code within here as well for some cool new functionality so all right so there we go I think we've gone through We've gone through all of them. All right, so now, uh, as anyone who used this might want now, I have a few buttons in here that basically presets. So as you're going through those different layouts, uh, if you find one that you like and you want to be able to use it, I've now got buttons in here that allow you to save them as presets. So, for example, if I wanted to save this one as a preset, I'd hold down the Shift key and then press, press one of these super source preset buttons that are on here. Uh, conversely, if once you've got some of those assigned, I've, and I've already pre-assigned a bunch here, 
before I started the video, you just press the button for those, and then it automatically does the transition between those. Now I should mention that these are only storing the layout of the boxes. It's not actually storing the sources associated with those boxes. So if your sources change, source for box one changes, source for box two changes, etc., then you'll get a slightly different you'll get different sources in your final video. Then so so yeah, so these buttons are really just remembering the layouts. But as you as you can tell, it's doing cool transitions between those. All right, now um, let me go back to this one. So I've got a couple of other buttons on here, and all the all the code for all these buttons is included in, in the download that I'm making available. So probably the coolest ones that I've that I've added. Um, we have program to super source, and then super source to preview. So let me start with super source to preview because that one's actually relevant right now. So right now, if uh, if you look over my shoulder, you'll see that. The video of me, the camera that I'm talking to, is on currently on preview. And the super source to preview basically takes a live super sources on program and does a transition to whatever is currently on preview. So it's doing the it's doing a fancy version of a cut or a dissolve essentially. So when I press that you'll see that it knows that my source is already on screen and therefore does a transition from that smaller box to the full screen box. And then it, it takes the, what was previously on super source and moves that back to preview. So therefore, you can actually find another layout or adjust the sources in the in the current layout uh, and use those in, in the future. Now, with that said, there is the other button here that I mentioned, program to super source, and that does a transition from the current program to the selected uh, super source layout. And again, if you look over my shoulder here, you can see that I, I've got the the two side by side one of the two side by side layouts selected and if I press program to super source it's going to take the program and do a transition to that super source layout because my video source was already in there it was just able to do a quick shrink if it was not in there for example let me go back to this and then I will select uh, we'll make it's going to take me a couple steps here, but we'll go to my computer feed, make that go live, and then I'll select my super source. My super source, which you, which you can't currently see, but it's basically my camera and the overhead camera for my X keys. So if I go ahead and press program to super source, it's going to do, it's going to move the previous pre pre program off screen and then bring the other sources in. So it's doing some intelligent it's got some intelligence in there to try and figure out, hey, what can I do in order to get from what's currently on program to what I want on the super source? So now that said, there is one situation where it can't, and that's where if you have four super source boxes active in your selected layout and none of the sources on pre on none of those sources match up with what's currently on pre on program. So basically there are no extra boxes in order to make a, a smooth transition of whatever's currently on program. I know this is confusing. Go back and play it a couple times if it doesn't make sense. But ba basically, because all four uh, super source boxes are in use, there is nothing that it can do in order to try and do a smooth transition, whatever is currently on program. So in that case, the button actually doesn't do anything in order to make sure that you're not messing up uh, the program that you have. All right. Okay. There's a couple other buttons that I've added here. I have one box one full screen, box two full screen, and currently. Like, for example, if I press box one full screen, that will take box one, which is on the left, and transition that to full screen. So if I press that, it will do a smooth transition from just the, the small window in order to full screen. And then it takes the previous super source layout and puts that back on the preview bus so that you can do, then do something else with it. So, all right. Um, as you may have noticed, if you paid attention to the previous video, these transitions are now done with an ease in and out instead of being linear. So at the time I shot the last video, those transitions, the motion was completely linear. So the speed was the same from the time it started to the time it stopped. And now with this update, and actually this is one of the updates that I published previously without telling anyone, uh, it, it does an ease in and an ease out. So if I press, the, press this button here, you can see that it accelerates as its starting motion and decelerates as it's nearing its final position. 
So it's a little bit more. It's a it's a little just a little more aesthetic. It looks a little better, a little more uh, visually friendly than what was what it was doing previously. So, but so that's kind of it. So I, I've I've added these these cooling features, and basically it's to the point now where the functionality that I use now. Didn't, none of the functionality that I use now existed in the original version. So all the buttons that I use now, the presets and these two other programs, the SuperSource and SuperSource's preview buttons that, I, that I've added, those are the only, way, only ways that I actually use this now, and I don't use the uh, previous uh, apply layout button that I had created. It's still there, but, but it's probably less useful. Uh, oh, there's also one other one I should mention here, and I'll just go full screen with that, and that is a SuperSource border. So if I go SuperSource, Program to super source. Um, actually, let's go to a layout that shows. There we go. So it shows the above camera. So now I have a button to change the border. So pressing it makes it bigger, and then holding down shift and pressing it makes the border smaller. So just a little tiny enhancement there. Uh, but but yeah. So that software is there. It's available for free. Uh, I the only thing I ask is that if you're going to if you want to uh, make it available for other people, that you link directly to my website and not not host the file on your own server somewhere and that's primary that's two reasons one so i can track the downloads and make sure i know how many people are downloading it but also because i do release updates from time to time maybe some, some of them are bug fixes but i also do feature updates as well and if, if the file is hosted somewhere else that then someone downloads that copy they won't be getting the latest version so if you want to link to this please link to my website the djp.li slash super source two in order to do so so, again, I'm making the software available for free. Uh, I'm not charging anything for it. I uh, Feel free to modify it. Um, I'm going to do a separate video right after this one where I actually show how to create your own custom super source layout uh, by modifying the files that I include in the download. So if that's something that might interest you, uh, watch for that other video. It's going to be released shortly. Uh, and it, I'll, I'll have step-by-step -step instructions on how to make those changes. Um, I should also mention that while the X keys controller that I'm using here is not technically necessary, the code will run without it. It sure does make using this a whole lot easier. There are other ways to trigger just macros macros, but having the X keys controller is certainly the easiest way that I've found. So you can do it by going to the macros tab and might manually starting them there. And there is ways of doing other devices to trigger, such as MIDI controller or whatever. But again, I found that this is the easiest way to do it. And these panels are pretty well built and are not that expensive. So if this is something you might be interested in, I would seriously consider looking at one of these panels. And I would very much appreciate using one of the links in the description in order to do so. Uh, those, those links help this channel quite a bit. So very much appreciated. So anyway, if you guys have questions, be sure and ask those in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And also, please share these videos with other people. We're really trying to grow this channel a lot now. And it's one of the reasons that I brought Wit on in order to help do the editing. We wa really want to get aggressive about growing this channel. There's a lot of need for video production information with so many more people trying to do live streaming these days. I want to help. I really want to help. But at the same time, it costs us to make the videos. So anything you do to share, get additional viewers, uh, sign up as a Patreon supporter, purchase products through the Amazon links, or even sign up for my crew access website. All those things help. And we very much appreciated any, any sort of help that you can do in order to help grow this channel. We are going to get very aggressive about growing here in the next little while. So your help and support for that is very much appreciated. So everyone, thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.